Here's a question that players often get, harmonica players get. They've been playing for a little while and they're, they know that there's this thing called amplifying the harmonica and they've seen people with microphones and amps. And the question is, what difference does it make when you have a mic and an amp? What difference does it make to the harmonica sound? It's a great question. It's something that I, I think as a beginning player many years ago when I was 16 or 17, I kind of, I just knew that it was more fun, it was louder to grab a mic and plug a mic into an amp. I had an old sort of wall size Epiphone guitar amp, not an ideal harmonica amp. What, what difference does it make in the sound? So let me, I'm going to talk a little bit about this and I'm going to do this quickly, but I'm also going to play a little bit. And let me uh, advise you on one particular thing. When I was... 18, I wanted to be an audio engineer, an acoustical engineer, and I thought a lot about sound. So there's this idea of on-axis and off-axis. On-axis means that when I'm looking right now, if I look just below the lens, I'm looking at the mic, I'm going to scrape it. That's the mic for the video cam that I'm using. High frequencies are much more powerful on-axis. They tend to dissipate their power when you're off-axis. So if if you're over here, if I'm playing the harmonica over here, I'm off axis. If I'm here, I'm directly on axis. This is going to make a huge difference when it comes to describing the difference between uh, an unamplified harmonica sound and an amplified sound. Because unless I'm conscientious, and I'm going to be conscientious, you're going to get this acoustic harp on axis. But if I play, I have an amp down, actually I have to take a look, sort of an amp down there in the corner. If I play here, right, this mic in the camera, is going to pick up, it's, it's going to be way off axis from that amp. So I'll show you, I'll show you this. But then I'm, what I'm going to do is take the camera out away from the amp so you're actually kind of on axis with the amp. And I think that'll show you something useful. Okay, harmonica sound. So uh, unamplified, of course your hand makes a big difference because your hand accentuates cer certain frequencies. This is why when you go, it sounds different than, and when you open it up, what makes that wah? Well, that wah is simply opening up the suppressed low frequency, the suppressed high frequencies. They're suppressed with the hand. So those low frequencies are, are traveling right through the hand. <laughs> Phil Wiggins has this incredible sound. <laughs> but if I open it up, I'm actually making my hands into a kind of loudspeaker and they're driving those frequencies right to that mic that I'm scraping right there, right? On axis. So unamplified harmonica sound right away, what kind of, what's, what's the unamplified harmonica sound? Well, it makes a difference how you hold it and whether your hands are open or closed. When they're open, remember again, you're letting the high frequencies that are much more powerful on axis come right out into the listener's ears. In fact, your ears are little loudspeakers too, sort of like your hand, right? Um, sort of that does this, uh, has the same effect as sort of amplifying and di making directional the high frequencies. Okay, now that's, let me just play a lick that you'll have in your mind. So if I play the opening riff to Juke, I'm using a B-flat harp. I'm doing a little tongue blocking at the end. Now, unamplified harp, hopefully you got a good sound, hopefully I've got a good sound, I've been working on it for a while, that's unamplified. So what difference does a mic and an amp make in the sound of the harmonica? Well, we're going to find out right now. Now, what I want you to notice is, amp back there, take a look at that amp. And don't look at the slippers on my feet, by the way, not cool for a blues guy. So the amp, we're sort of on axis right now. This is obviously tablecloth, part of the on axis sound. Um, and we've got, notice a, a bright, a wooden floor here. This is not wood, but it's sort of fake looking wood. Um, and that's actually going to kick up some highs. They're going to go down. They're going to go down, hit the wood, and come up. Again, I'm going to scrape the little, where the mic is on the camera. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through, through two different mics. The first one is just a, it's a Shure vocal mic. It's the one that I've been using for many years. I've got a, a, a half dozen of these. Shure PE5H. Nothing special about it. It's got a good, clean sound, good low end. But this amp, this harp gear amp, it turns out to be great with almost any kind of mic. Um, and I'm going to turn it up. The, the treble is between two and three. 
because you don't want much treble on this amp. Um, and the volume, I'm going to turn between 7 and 8. It's going to kick butt, okay? So let's see how this works. Uh, we're going to plug it in. I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to turn it up to... Now, what was that sound? All right. So, again, I'm trying to be on live TV here. Again, that sound... That is, there's two kinds of feedback. What's the, what's the difference between unamplified and amplified harmonica sound? Well, one key thing is that the amp accentuates certain frequencies, and it actually it can have two kinds of feedback. So that high-pitched squeal, let's see if we can get that squeal. All right, that's called high-end feedback, and it means you're getting a, a kind of little loop. Just in the air, whatever sound in the room is, is going back and forth between the mic and the amp. There's also low-end. Totally different frequency range. Do you hear that? Hear, hear, hear that? That's high-end uh, feedback, low-end feedback. Did you know there were two different kinds of feedback? Playing harmonica with a mic is tough, tough work. Now, what's the sound? Well, it's going to be obviously much louder. So what's the difference between harmonica sound unamplified and amplified? It's louder when it's amplified, but other things happen. So one thing that happens is overdrive, a kind of, you could call it a fuzzbox effect. So you're going to overdrive uh, the, the preamp circuits, the power amp circuits, two different kinds of tube circuits in this tube amp, and the speaker. Best speakers for a harmonic amp are probably small magnets, so they, they overdrive, and you want them to overdrive, right? They're sort of built to overdrive in that particular way. Um, and what that does is that compresses the sound, and it tends to accentuate what we call a kind of crunch. It accentuates a certain kind of frequency, um, that just makes a pleasing sound if you like loud, aggressive harp. Okay, so here we go. especially obvious when you do a vent note. Let me get down here with the harp. I can actually, it might feed back. So everything that you do, again, what I should do is I should play just naked harp. Now, my basic sound sort of as sound is the same. One reason I like this mic is you can hear the gusso sound in there. But wow, there's a kind of honeybee, honeybee sound. It's a very powerful, in fact, I'm a little out of breath. It's a very powerful sound with the right amp and the right mic and the right player and the right cup. That's a crucial element of the sound. I've got a much longer video, by the way, that I did a few years back called Amping the Harp. And I'll try to put a, a link at the bottom of the video. Um, now, sometimes with certain mics, this mic doesn't actually have as much of a difference between open and closed. mics have quite a bit more variance. What I like about this mic is that when I go to the upper end and my hand comes off the harp a little bit, the sound's still powerful. So that, so that it gets a good compressed... Compressed means that the, the difference between the loudest and the softest sound is not that big. It's, you want a certain amount of compression makes for a powerful sound. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off, plug in a different mic. Okay, so same amp, different mic, and cool cable, blue cable, different mic. This is, uh, Greg Human makes these. It's, it's a sort of half-size half bullet mic. We call these bullet mic. It sort of looks like a, like a bullet, right? Like an ancient bullet. Um, the originals, originals of these were, uh, you know, radio dispatchers mics from the, the 40s. What is it like? Cab number one, cab number one. You've got a, something on line three. Okay. Um, it turns out they're really good for harp. I'm, I'm unusual in really not preferring these, but this particular one, and I, I don't get any money for this, it's the only one that I, that I, I would play because I like the size. The size is really not that different. Ah, if I get the one I was just playing, take a look. Take a look at the size, right? 
little bit smaller actually, rather than much bigger, which is your standard bullet thing. Here's the sound. Now one key interesting thing, when I was playing this mic, um, and by the way, this, th this is a, uh, what we'll call a dynamic mic. It's a vocal mic, basically, that I'm using for harp, and it has a little mini loudspeaker in it. These mics don't have that. They have uh, different kinds of what they call elements, crystal elements or ceramic elements, but they're not the same. It gives a different sound. It gives, uh, with vocals, one, two, three, four, usually a, a more distorted sound. And it turns out what distorted means is simply that the, the relative volume of the different frequencies from low to high is not quite the natural uh, range that you'd get for a vocal mic. Now, I don't, that's one of the reasons I like vocal mics, is I kind of like the, the, the natural sound, and then I like an amp that I can crank up, right? The thing about this, though, has a lot of bottom end, a lot of, and it's, it's a very aggressive sound, but not super crazy. It's actually, it's kind of nice. Oh. Now, one more thing I want to tell you is I had to turn the amp down from 7.5 to 6. This is a higher output mic. You actually want a high output mic to get a good sound uh, on amplified harp. Anyway, here we go. Wow. Wait a minute. Whoa. Whoa. Now, here's what's interesting and why I don't generally use this kind of mic. What's interesting is that these mics are much more sensitive to hand position. And they tend to roll off pretty quick. The moment you take your hands away from cupped, they tend to lose that punchy sound. So I'd rather give up a little of that punch and have a slightly more consistent sound. These ones, I'll show you what I mean. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if you can tell, but it loses some of its a little woodier, a little less compressed, a little less overdriven, but the moment I put the hand on, that's how you can really tell. Hear how it comes up and it, it gets that good sound? Can't argue with that, that's a great sound. self-indulgence in my back. Dr. Dr. Gusso's back and knees can't take much more of this. I hope that works for you. Anyway, that's the difference between... Now you know the difference between the unamplified sound and the amplified sound of a harmonica. Thanks for asking. Oh, God.